from where opposition leader Raila Odinga sits, I'm sure he has got one very big regret. One very, very big regret because all these years until now, even as he faces the, the 2017 uh, presidential elections, this thing will be excess baggage for him. It will continue to haunt him. It will continue to make people doubtful about him and doubtful about his presidency. Of course, I'm talking about the, the events of 1982, actually to be exact, August 1st, 1982. That was when there was an attempted coup in Kenya. The first time there's been any serious attempted coup in Kenya. And uh, as events unfolded, and uh, as the coup was crushed, many Kenyans died, and as the dust settled, it emerged to Kenyans that one of the main organizers of that coup was Raila Amolo Odinga. And this is what makes uh, people in certain quarters, in fact, very powerful people, uh, doubt a Raila Odinga presidency. Up to this very minute, even as we head to these elections. But what actually happened, let's start by discussing what actually happened in that coup. To be honest with you, there are a lot of things in that coup that are shrouded in mystery. One of them being, who was the main person behind that coup? Actually, in my book, Dark Secrets of the Kenyan Presidency, we cover that topic extensively. And we answer that question of the mysterious person, actually a civilian, who was behind that coup. But back to Raila. Raila Odinga was part of a group which decided to preempt the coup which was coming. And to be honest with you, had they waited, because the coup was planned for a few days later, had they waited for the other people to carry out the coup, many experts and many observers believe it would have been successful. And the government of Daniel Arabi Charab Moy would have been toppled. But uh, you never know. I believe that uh, Kenya is in the hands of God. And I believe that the hand of God was in those events. Because what Raila Odinga and company did preempted a coup which would have succeeded. It was in the early morning of uh, August 1st, which, uh, which was actually a Sunday. And um, it was general knowledge, not really general knowledge. A lot of people knew that there was a coup coming. In fact, it has been revealed that even President Moy was aware of a coup, but he was told by his handlers and his advisors that they had nothing to worry about, that those were just rumors, baseless rumors, that actually a coup could never happen in Kenya. And it, it is as a result of that coup, or rather attempted coup, that Moy completely changed and started ruling Kenya with an iron hand. You can read all that in the Dark Secrets, in my book, The Dark Secrets of the Kenyan Presidency. But for this particular recording, we are focusing on the character of Raila Molodinga. Now, Raila did not succeed in that coup. And we all know that uh, attempting to overthrow a government is an offense called treason. And there's only one, there's only one judgment. There's only one thing that happens to somebody who commits treason anywhere in the world. And that is, they're put to death. So, you need to ask yourself the question, how come Raila was not put to death? How did he survive? Again, that question is answered in Dark Secrets of the Kenyan Presidency. Actually, there's a lot of information. I cannot cover it in these few minutes. But going forward, it will be very difficult for Raila to repair that dark spot in his long, illustrious career. We has done so much for the country. He has sacrificed so much. He has fought for the second liberation. Everybody recognizes that. But that tiny, small dark spot is what his enemies, is what his opponents will forever use against him. You can write it off and say that, oh, uh, Raila was much younger then, hot-headed. In fact, hot-headed like his dad, who did not want to see a younger man ascend to the presidency and therefore decided to finish deal with that man by allowing a Kikuyu presidency. And that is by allowing, by reminding people that Jomo Kenyatta was in detention, that Africans don't want independence at least unless Jomo Kenyatta is released, knowing very well that 
the young man was fighting against Tomboya. Majority of his constituents were Kikuyu. So if he was going to oppose what uh, um, Oginga Odinga, Raila's father, said, then he knew he was finished. So that is what Raila's father did. And as a result of Jomo coming in, the presidency moved and went to Jomo and the Kikuyu. And to this day, the presidency has never returned, some people say. So in the same way, with Raila, with his hot-headedness, decided that it was a good idea to overthrow Moi's government. And to be honest, Moi's government until then was not dictatorial. It was not authoritarian, authoritative. It was not, you know, Moi was a laid-back president. In fact, that's why the coup happened in the first place. I think nobody was scared of Moi at that time. Because compared to Jomo Kenyatta, who people just had the name Jomo Kenyatta and people were frightened of the old man. But in dark contrast, in sharp contrast rather, in sharp contrast, Moi was a soft, soft, soft president up to that time. And that's how the coup happened. Well, let's wait and see how events unfold in the 2017 presidential elections. I am certain that this is one issue that is going to come up that you'll hear discussed in campaign meetings, oh, this man should not be president because he once tried to overthrow the government. In other future videos, I'll try and cover what happened in that uh, unfortunate uh, um, coup attempt in 1982 uh, in more detail. But for now, let's just focus on Ray Laudinga, see what happens as we go forward, see what the other opponents are going to say, what his opponents are going to say about him. I guarantee you this issue is going to come up. And actually it's a fact that Raila tried to engineer a coup to preempt another coup which was coming. But bottom line, he attempted a coup to violently overthrow the government of Kenya. I think that's it for now. Um, thank you very much for listening to me. By the way, this was Chris Kumekucha. And I look forward to other recordings where we shall discuss more. Just remember that my book is still available. All you have to do is go over to kumekucha.blogspot.com, wait for that box to pop up, put your email address there, and you will get a copy of this amazing book and read for yourself. I'm not on any side. I don't favor Jubilee. I don't favor NASA. I'm not against Raila. I just state facts. Yeah. So go over, get the book, read the facts for yourself. And then, because there are also other facts about the Kenyatta regime and the bad things they did. Kenyatta was a wise man, he was a good man, but there are some certain factors that forced his hand. Read it all in my book, Dark Secrets of the Kenyan President. I think you're really going to enjoy it. And this is a great chance, opportunity for you. You don't have to spend anything. Just go there, wait for five seconds, the box will pop out, put in your email address, and boop, you're going to have the book. Thank you for listening to me. This is Chris Kumukucha signing off. Bye.